United States of America, here I come. You're all working too hard. So anyway, this is Canal Side and Buffalo, the waterfront. So you didn't consider reporting in at one of our official entry sites? Not as good as I thought it would be. At least the Americans were happy. What a beautiful day. Beautiful. Hello and welcome back to another video, another adventure. Uh, my name's Nigel, the channel is Nigel's Cheap Vlogs, also known as a Lake Erie uh, vlogger. And today, I'm off on a proper, real proper adventure today. I'm really looking forward to this. It's like a two uh, videos in one. Uh, what we're gonna do is go way over there which is Buffalo, actually just over there, so is a, a state park just over here, I can't remember the name of it now, but it's uh, 16 kilometers away, so that's where we're heading. But before we could actually get on land, uh, what we had to do was actually apply to the uh, Customs Border Patrol in the United States and get in. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you Buffalo River, Buffalo Harbor Front, uh, Buffalo itself, anything I can do on the CD around there, and also most importantly, how legally to cross over the border in your personal watercraft or your small boat into United States from Canada. So all that is coming up in this video. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm at Crystal Beach, my usual spot, my local spot. All right, there's a few things you're gonna need before you can actually try and attempt uh, to cross over to the United States. And it's not just a matter of just getting on your vessel and just going over, that is no, it's an illegal entry. You need to apply before you actually go over. And I'll discuss all that right now. So you're thinking of going over to the United States on your sea doo jet ski, personal watercraft, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you're just going over for the day, maybe two days. So what you're going to need to do, you're going to need two things, two things on your smartphone. You're going to need the CBP Rome app, which looks like this, and then the Arrive Can app, which looks like this, in order to get back into the country. Before we fill out these things, you will need these things as well. You're going to need an up-to-date passport, your Canadian one, preferably. Um, if you're gonna, gonna go on a permanent residency card, you may have, you may have a few problems because you will need that little insert, which is for to say that you're waiver exempt. So I'm not too sure 100% how that's gonna work. Uh, also keep with you and have it handy. You're gonna need your registration of your vessel and documents like that and your boater's license because very, very shortly, we're gonna be filling out the app and uh, certain requirements of the app will ask for information like your registration number, the length of the vessel, and so on. And we'll get into that right now. Okay, so now you've got the uh, CBPM Rome app on your phone, you need to open it up. So uh, just tap on it, open it up, uh, create an account, which is an email address and a password, of course. And then, we'll, then what they'll do is send you an author, uh, <laughs> use your authorcator. Is that the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Authorcator app, and it'll send a code to that, which you put in here to just make sure you basically just check out that it is you. So once you've done that, you put that in and that's done. Okay, you're now gonna create a profile, so you're just gonna tap on that. My information's already put in there, so you're just putting your name, your last name, your date of birth, uh, country, uh, email, contact, um, document number, which will be your passport number, date of issue, expiration. It's very, self, it's very easy to do, actually, and it's gonna ask you to take a photograph of your passport, then you can attach it to this profile, and so on. So that's actually quite easy. Mode of travel. Now, click on mode of travel, which is just down at the bottom there, and I've got under there, mode of travel, I've got pleasure boat. Uh, BRP, CDU is what I put in for the make the year 2021. It did ask for the month and stuff. I just put in the day I picked it up because uh, I don't know exactly what date it was actually built. Uh, country of origin, Canada, registrations on Ontario, the registration number, which is here, I've now put on there. Uh, the length of the boat is approximately 13 feet. The flag country is going to be Canada, of course, and it was built in Mexico. Cruising license, I don't have one. If you do have one, you can put it in there, but I think that's for the bigger boats. Uh, so I didn't bother with that and it accepted it. So once that's saved, that's done. Okay, what you need to do now just before you travel is actually just let them know you're on your way. So they told me about an hour before you actually make the journey over there. So basically just open the app, report arrival. That's what it's gonna look like, report arrival. Click on that. I'm now going to select uh, my pleasure boat, my BRP CDU 2021, tap on that. Add in my name, because I'm the traveler that's traveling, add that one to it. And then what it does then, it sends this information uh, to the CBP. 
And within a few minutes, you then get a, another response uh, saying the, a, a, a video chat is going to be set up and they want to have a quick word with you. It took about five minutes for them to call me back from the moment they said they're going to do it. And also you get this phone call and um, yeah, I had a quick chat with the office, asked me a few questions. He was super nice and ended up sounding a bit like this. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, get you checked in. Uh, you'll get a, a message notification through the app saying you're checked in. It'll give you a check in number. Uh, so if you happen to be encountered by Border Patrol or somebody out in the water, uh, just uh, show them that number or show you're checked in. And uh, other than that, you're all set. All right. All right, you bet. Have a good time. Take care. Now, once that phone call had been done, you then get on the app, you get the approval code and showing you that it's now been approved and uh, you're good to go. They send you a receipt to your email address and now you can go and launch your personal watercraft, your sea dew in the lake, in the water and make your way over to the United States of America. All right, <clears throat> we're out on the water. It's uh, currently 25 degrees, I just checked, so it's absolutely beautiful. Once again, crystal clear waters here at Crystal Beach. Let's go. United States of America, here I come. the shoreline let's quickly uh, pull up the map on google here and show you which uh, routing i took and uh, departed crystal beach and uh, made my way southerly right across the lake to a place called pinehurst and from there i'm gonna make my way up the coastline uh, to see checking out the sites around that area then make my way into a uh, buffalo harbor then eventually onto buffalo river and then wind myself around the buffalo river uh, by the way it took me about 20 minutes to cross over lake erie in eco mode uh, doing about 50 kilometers an hour all the way over in the US. I uh, crossed over the border, the imaginary line in the water, but I was too busy looking around me. I forgot to notice it on the, uh, the Garmin as I crossed over to celebrate. So, oh well, uh, we're in America. Uh, upstate New York at the uh, far west end of it. Now I'm in a place called uh, Pinehurst, I believe. I think Pinehurst is just to the right there. And this is something Grey Cliffs something Lloyd it's an unusual thing it's just a shouldn't like a sort of thing you'll see on the escarpment I guess more on the Canadian side going up towards Hamilton Way and Guelph area and uh, places like that uh, but one of the first things I notice when when I travel towards the US coastline on Lake Erie is uh, sorry to shut that alarm off is how green it is uh, there's a lot more vegetation over here a lot more trees uh, then we got on our side. It's uh, a lot thicker in greenery, which is really, really nice. So, hey, uh, yeah, this is some sheer. There's a main road up there, sheer drop, and now we're going to make our way along the coastline here, and slowly make our way into a uh, buffalo. I had to put the uh, this on my face because a few bugs flying around now. 
that's kind of nice. We're gonna make our way over to the uh, the windmills over there. It's like it's being bulldozed away. It's like a. I'm gonna say that's an unnatural. I don't know. It, 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 it should be a natural cliff, but I don't think it is. No, it can't be. That can't be a natural cliff. And again, who knows? I'm sure the people of Buffalo know. Is that naturally that high, or is it something that's been put there by man and it's just washed away over the years? Intrigued. Now, these uh, windmills here is usually what we can see from uh, our side of the lake in Canada uh, the Crystal Beach boat launch uh, you can just about work them out with the naked eye in the daytime but at night time they all light up they've got all the little red lights on because of course it's on the approach to the Buffalo Airport so they have to have the uh, the aviation lights on top to notify uh, flights that something is high here so yeah these are visible from the Canadian side especially at night I just noticed on this hydro on this uh, windmill here, uh, they've got a buffalo painted on it. So zoom in. Just caught my eye as, as I was uh, getting closer to it. But yeah, it's kind of neat. No journey is complete. Look at that for a coffee. Thanks, Tegan. Uh, this was a a present last year for me, but I saved it for this year because I still had my uh, my Helly Hansen mug. It's like two, two coffees in there. It keeps me going all day. Oh, that's good. Thanks. Now, that just caught my eye. Uh, there was a small chance of showers this afternoon. Now, if we look to our northeast, crystal clear. Look to our west, it's pretty cool. Uh, but if we turn ourselves to the southwest, that's bubbling. So I have to keep an eye on that. It could be a wet ride home. I might even end up chasing a storm, you never know. So I have to keep an eye on the uh, weather system. I'm okay, really, if it rains. I just gotta be careful of the winds because the winds can really whip up this lake really, really quickly. Um, but worst case scenario, I can always get my wife to uh, pick up my vehicle and meet me down the river and she can pick me up from there. Uh, so that's not too much of a problem. Yeah, that's if it gets really, really bad, but I doubt it. Always gotta have a backup plan. A random branch just sticking out of the uh, lake here. I mean, 33 feet of water. <laughs> Always gotta look where you're going. I found a lighthouse. I think it's a lighthouse. It's classed as a lighthouse, it's gotta be. Let's go and have a look. I don't see a bulb in it, so I don't know if it's in use or not. But it's the entrance to this waterway anyway. It's neat looking. What a cool looking building. I don't want to get too close to these fishermen. No swimming, submerged jagged pilings. That's cool. I don't know what this building is, it's kind of a neat structure, old, regardless. Oh, it's the South Buffalo Lighthouse, it says so right there. It's a very industrial area around here, the old uh, chimney stacks. Now, I don't know what to do here. It's got a conveyor belt around the other side. I don't think it's coal, it can't be coal here, I wouldn't thought. Uh, I know Buffalo has a history of grain, and they have grain elevators, but this is a bit far, further in, so I don't think it is. Alright, authorised vessels only, so I can't go any further than that sign. But you can imagine, uh, I'm going to guess some of the big ships come in here still. Um, they must have to be pushed in by a tug, uh, but I guess they'll go up alongside here, drop off the salt, sand. Listen to those goals. Shut that off a minute. Uh, 
I'm not sure what these would have been back in the day. But there's a, a hoist up there which some guy probably would have stood on. Maybe it would have had cables running across it, who knows? But hey, cool. Looks like some fuel terminal down there in the far distance. These are definitely like silos that you'll probably put green in and things like that. That's buffalo. So we're getting closer. This is uh, really cool. All right, I think that's ready to be torn down, don't you? I wonder how much longer that'll stay there for. Those clouds are getting darker. There you have it, the city of Buffalo, now in view, getting pretty close to it. This looks like the main entrance to the harbour coming up. Um, I'm going to try and get on, the, which is the Buffalo River, to a blind making my way over to. So, anywhere, somewhere, I don't know. I think this is the entrance. Or is it the next one on? I should look at my map. <laughs> Yeah, this is it. This is the uh, river. Because there's the warships I'm looking for. Alright, the, um, the submarine ahead of us is a World War II submarine. It is the USSS Croker. Uh, as I said, served in World War II. I don't know how close up we can get to it. There's also two other warships here. Um, USSS the Sullivans and the USSS Little Rock. Now I don't know which is which until I see the name on it. So there's your submarine, 246. Now, is this a destroyer? To me it looks big enough to be a destroyer. Hey, which one's this, Little Rock or the Sullivan? It's Little Rock. Where's Sullivan? Other side, all right. <laughs> Cheers, guys. So this is the uh, USS Little Rock. It's bigger than what I thought. I thought it was a destroyer. It's not. Cool, eh? Now, the USS Sullivan's is uh, behind Little Rock. It's just under there. Just about to see the name on it. And the ship gets its name from the... Uh, five brothers that were killed on a, a ship all at the same time so in honor of them they had a ship named after them the Sullivan's 537 there you have it a destroyer ship can't get closer to that but this is pretty impressive you're all working too hard Now, this looks like where trams, uh, rail cars go. Yep, I can see a tram in there. Nice building as well. I wonder how old that is. My friend Jonathan would know that. Being a train geek. Jonathan, how old is this building? Now the tour boat's ahead of me. What I should do, <laughs> I should just pull up to the tour boat and listen to what he has to say. <laughs> but anyway, here's a uh, fire boat. City of Buffalo, Edward M. Cotter. It's kind of cool. Yeah, Buffalo Fire Department, so that's cool. Quite a big tug, actually. Quite a big size. Now, of course, we've seen many of these in Port Coburn along the Welland Canal. Um, also at the entrance of uh, Hamilton and the thing I remember seeing a ship coming into quite a few ships do come down here I actually chased one not so long ago uh, end of last year and I was riding the wake on it <laughs> it was pretty cool uh, one of the cement ships that came in oh that smells sweet what is that oh General Mills look at that oh my god that smelled great so the General Mills factory and it smells bloody great so they're probably making lots of cereal in there and I'm a big cereal fan all right, not sure what this place is, but it looks really cool. 
Uh, brewery maybe? No, it can't be a brewery, it's Canadian, but it's got uh, Labatt's Blue written all over it. Canadian Pilsner. So it's some kind of entertainment complex, I'd imagine. But yeah, it looks like it. Just like stuff takes place there. You can moor up here, I guess. Tiki parking only, no docking. There's people on the patio having a bite to eat. There's a nice bar there. Yeah, it looks like some entertainment place. Buffalo Blue Way, another old building. That's cool. Small Ferris wheel. It's not quite the London Eye, is it? <laughs> so I noticed all the way along here, there's lots of boat tours you can go on. You can also rent kayaks as well. Lots of kayak rental places for you to come down and uh, yeah, rent a kayak and uh, transcend the, uh, well, navigate the uh, Buffalo River, which is pretty cool. There's another old building. Loving this trip. This is brilliant. Hello, geese. So this must be the cement place. So the ship must ground on the other side to dock, which I've which I chased in once. There's all these uh, cement trucks are here too, like they deliver all the powders and stuff. Cool. Now I haven't seen a sign anywhere that says no weight. I really want to floor it for a minute, but I best not. Look how industrial it is around here. Bloody brilliant. Look at that wheels so the whole thing the whole shaft moves it's probably not in operation now but at one time it would have gone from silo to silo just going along and you can see the chute at the top which i presume i know engineer but it must get loaded in from here from the ships and then dropped at the top end into the silos grain elevator would that be it i'm guessing that's exactly what it is it's a grain elevator so they would Put the grain in, shoot it up to the top, and then it'll pop out that end. That's cool. I don't think that's moved for a very long time. There's some more over here as well. Let's have a little look. Oh yeah, you can see inside the mechanics on this one. Look at that. Oh yeah, you can see the cables in there from the shaft. Which must go all the way up. And they must just, uh, yeah, carry things up, shoot things up. A lot of rust on that now. Wow. I definitely don't think that's still in use. It can't be. But are these silos still in use? Because that looks like pretty fairly new work with that piping out there. Who knows? Seriously, I'm like a kid in a candy store. Every corner, every turn I make, there's something new. More old buildings, more old silos. Got a few more boats down here, a few tugs. I mean, big vessels are gonna come down here. I mean, you're looking at 30 feet of water in the channel here, so big stuff can still get down here. Oh, look at this. This is neat. See what I tell you, you go around another bend and something else is there. That's cool. Let's come check it out. Look at this. Look at this. Just put that into a uh, cruise. Look at this. Now, is this being scrapped or is it being renovated or what? Now, it looks like one of those boats at one time may, similar in size, I guess, which would have gone over to uh, uh, the Canadian side and took people. I mean, I'm not saying it's this one, because I don't remember, I don't recognize the name. But yeah, it's a mighty old vessel, it's seen better days. It's just rotting away here. Wonder what it's just left here for? Why are they scrapping it? It's like, that can't be refixed, surely. If it can, that is a major, major project. Look at the state of this thing. <laughs> ah, this is seen better days. Was it gonna Looks like in the next storm, a lot of that sheeting is just going to fall off and get ripped off. Watch out, geese, you might get hurt there one day. Every turn, look at that, another relic. Now I'm closer, you can see it's in uh, 
it's in rough shape. There's a train yard here as well. I'd love to find out the history of these buildings, I really would. So I found all these things, so what I'm going to do when I get home is I'm going to research them all. If need be, I can do a, a narration over it all, or save it for another day. So we'll see. Oh, the lift bridge is up over there. Does that mean something's coming our way? I don't know. But the lift bridge is up. Be interesting to see. Slow down so I don't get these people wet of a week. Uh, now we're going to make another turn. And look. Ta da! Another old one. <laughs> It's phenomenal. There's just so much stuff to see down here. There really is. Looks like Buffalo has a lot of history down here, which I really need to explore. Wow, look at the state of these. Wow. You won't, you won't want to be standing underneath one of them or near here on a very windy day. One of those sheets flies off and hits you, it'll decapitate you. Oh, look at this lift bridge, this is really old. I'm so enjoying this. Um, this video could be hours long, I'll have to edit it though, as short as I can to make it interesting for you lot. But for me, this is just fantastic. <coughs> this is a really old bridge. Look at that. Hey, little baby goslings, baby geese, let them cross. Go on guys, you're before me. You gotta talk goose to them, right? See, he knows, it's going. Now, is this a rail? I don't know. Look at how beautiful they are. Those are the first ones I've seen this year. All right, stay safe, you guys. Yeah, that's a railway bridge. All right, people picnicking down here. There's a bridge that's up. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna presume it stays up. All right, I think I'll have some lunch here. Good spot to, uh, peaceful. Have a sandwich. With gas prices being so high and being so cheap, being nice and cheap loads, made my own lunch. Um, bit of ham, egg, and that's it really. So I'm just floating down here, floating down the Buffalo River, and that music you can hear in the background is like half a dozen people fishing just on the wall over there. So I've got some nice birds tweeting and some nice laid back music playing. Perfect. Mm. Mm. And that's my view as we uh, float down the river. So I'm just thinking to myself, I'm in America, I'm in another country, across the border, but in reality is, if I'd done it, like, if I could get away of going full throttle out of here and out onto Lake Erie, I'd be at Crystal Beach in 35 minutes. That's going full throttle, mind you. Going in eco mode, uh, probably like 45 minutes to an hour away. And that's my next problem. We got over here, no problem. Did the app. Now try and get back into Canada. It's going to be a different thing. I filled out my Arrive Can app yesterday, put my documents on there for my COVID. I was having a hard time finding this number because on their website, it just kept saying report to one of these locations. It listed all these marinas around the uh, province and around Canada in general. Oh, there goes the train.
a nice view to see as you come up the river. The city of Buffalo. It's nice buildings. Yeah, I just moored up for a few minutes, stretched my legs. Uh, been on the sea dew for three hours, so just had to get on the land for a minute and just stretch my legs out. Getting a little uh, crampy there. So anyway, this is Canal Side and Buffalo, the waterfront. Nice little sand pit here for the kids to play on. And parents, of course. Buffalo Heritage Castle Carousel. That's cool. Really cool. Uh, the carousel just started moving, so I just quickly read on it. 1924 this was built. So it's approaching 100 years old. around stretch my legs I went to try and use the washroom the only one I can find was a porta potty kind of nice one until I opened the door and uh, the, the urinal was blocked off and uh, the two toilets were overflowing with boop so I'm gonna have to hold it down until I get home so uh, yeah anyway gotta start making our way back because you can see from behind me the clouds are pretty dark and there is forecast for rain so I want to get ahead of it so uh, there's so much more to explore down here so i'm gonna have to come back in another couple of weeks maybe and check it out so in the meantime i'm gonna start making my way back across lake erie and uh head home so uh oh now i've got to call the uh, canadian government uh canada border services very shortly and let them know i'm coming back in so let's get onto the water and i'll do that next In order to return back to Canada, you must have the Arrive Can app completed, uh, which has all your information in there, your name, address, passport information. You also, your vaccine information for COVID has to be in there as well. Uh, once you get all that done, that's fine. But what you're supposed to do, which I was told I'm supposed to do, is contact a certain phone number and let them know I'm coming back. The internet on their webpage does show that you're meant to report to a marina uh, but that's, I believe that is for different kind of vessels. Uh, when I spoke to a Canada Border Service agent uh, directly, they told me, no, just call the number. And that is exactly what I did. And this is what happened. Into Canada from uh, Buffalo on my uh, personal watercraft. Um, I, did, I did an Arrive Can uh, app thing yesterday and I have a code number. Okay, uh, is it technically a boat or a plane? It's a boat. It's a personal watercraft. It's a jet ski. Oh, okay. And are you tied up at the dock right now? I'm floating in Buffalo Harbor, where I'm just about to leave. <laughs> okay, so give a, uh, give this number a call when you're tied up at the dock, okay? Oh, right. Back in Canada? Yeah. Okay, will do. I'm, just, I'm heading to Crystal Beach. Okay, thank you. So what I learned there was I have to call once I've landed in Canada and tied up to the okay. dock. This is all right. new to me. This is the very first time I've ever done this. So let's quickly head over the water and get to Crystal Beach. All right, so what I have to do is travel back over there and I give that number a call once I land. That makes sense. All right, so let's go home. That's a lot of heavy rain over there. Just where I was like a couple of hours ago, it's virtually, uh, I think it's already raining. Uh, just where the windmills are, it's raining. And uh, just further on the coast, you can see the, the shallow line right there. And there's the other one. And we're going to go all the way up here. So it's like 15 minutes from here at this speed, which is not too bad. Uh, we're just leaving uh, Fort Erie. Fort Erie is just over here. And I'm right between the two, Buffalo and Fort Erie. What a great day out this has been.
All right, here we are, back at uh, Crystal Beach. Oh. Now I'll call the uh, kind of border service agents and let them know I'm back. Right. Okay, where are you? Uh, Crystal Beach, Fort Erie. Okay, um, did you make previous customs arrangements? Uh, I fi um, I was just told to just phone when I arrive. I just spoke to someone a few minutes ago as well, and they said just call when you arrive. And I just once I've docked, they said just call. So I'm just calling. I did a um, arrive can app uh, documentation thing yesterday online. Supplied all my documents and got a reference number. Okay, but I'm just asking because Crystal Beach is. What's the name of the marina you're at? Oh, I'm not at marina. I'm at a public dock. Uh, the Crystal Beach public waterfront dock. If I'm on a jet ski. Okay. So you didn't consider reporting in at one of our official entry sites? All right, it's agents making me feel like I've done something really, really bad here, and I knew I hadn't. Anyway, after a very, very long wait, um, I got a call back from a different agent altogether. In fact, okay, it was a superintendent, number, which I super nice, oh, and told me everything was fine and I did everything She's not very correctly. Nice. <sighs> All right, 23 minutes. Learning curve. Uh, the superintendent got me checked in very, very quickly. It probably took less than two minutes once he took my details. He put me on hold very briefly for a few seconds. Came back, said, no, nope, all ready to go. You're good to go and proceed. Have a great day. And then he ended off by just giving me this one tip, which I'll play out for you, because uh, it's a very, very good tip if you're thinking of going over to the United States. And uh, this is fantastic information, and it's come directly from the, the mouth of a Canada Border Service agent superintendent. So uh, take a listen. Yeah, have a good day. Um, on a side note, I could do that again. Yeah. And you go over, if you don't go on land, like you went, God only went to the bathroom, so you, you had to actually call in like you did, so that's good. Okay. But if you just went over, say you go around the harbor, you YouTube what, did whatever you're doing, and you came back, you stayed on your on your jet ski the whole time. Yeah. You actually don't have to call in. I appreciate it. That's good to know. Really good to know. Thanks very much. So, like I said, if you go on land to go to the bathroom, you have reporting because you actually went on land. Yeah. If you stay, if you stay in your boat the whole time, you're good to go. All right. Thanks very much for that. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs> there we go. Some uh, useful information. So, if I don't get off my sea do, even though I'm driving around the harbour in Buffalo, uh, I don't have to report back into Canada. Uh, which is really, really good to know. So that is really, really good. So overall, that was a really pleasant experience, apart from those 20 minutes on hold, because the agent, I guess, was a little confused. But uh, we did it. So that was a uh, trip to Buffalo, legally, uh, using the, uh, the the US roadmap, the uh, Canada uh, Custom Border Patrol uh, roadmap, and then using the Canadian app coming back and just speaking to someone. So all went well. So another adventure over and done with. I hope you liked the video. I'll put all the links for what I've done, uh, all the for the apps and stuff in the description below. So uh, until the next adventure, stay safe. See you very soon. Oh, by the way, we beat the storm. There was lightning, picked up on the lightning tracker just over there. So we did good.